Hello everyone, welcome to episode 40, or part 40, of the Game Dev Tutorials. Um, got a big one for you guys today. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for saving and loading. I think we'll be able to get them both in for this video, so that way we can, uh, you know, get you guys on your way there. Um, we have the full solution available in the description. Um, it is episode 40, and, uh, you know, there's... It's a lot that we've covered since episode 30, and so I got another one out there. Again, I'm not going to promise every 10, but you know what? We covered a lot, and I, I wanted to get you guys uh, a catch-up point for those that haven't quite uh, gotten there yet. So um, just to quickly cover what we have covered in the last 10 episodes, um, what is different about this download from the last download, uh, we did tiled backgrounds. We did level selection on a world map. We did uh, mobs that can shoot. We did uh, the level draw manager, which is or part two of it, which is a pretty big part. Everything draws through that and keeps it all organized. Um, we added the blink skill. We added skill bars. We added a skill menu. Uh, we did a, a bug fix day, and we've added the options menu, and now we're adding saving and loading. Um, Guys, you should be able to take this and create save files for your game and everything. Um, I'm not quite there, but I will go over that later. Um, but this, when we do, we're going to do it for the options menu, and it's the same process for doing it for uh, the game, just at a greater scale. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, so for, just to go over what we're going to do, we're going to add the save class to the game. And then we're going to go over it. I'm not going to type out the save class. It's going to save me a lot of time. And it's going to allow me to do both of these in the same tutorial as opposed to separating them out. So um, it's going to save time by just going over that file. Plus, these are things I never type. I have this save file so that I don't have to type them. And so uh, I'd be fumbling around with it, to be honest. I just don't ever type it. I created my save file. And after that, I just use it or I edit it a little bit here and there when I need to. So um, we'll go over it. Uh, we have minor edits to do the option menu. Basically, I just want to change the title names real fast because there's they got the colon in them in the space, and it just looks sloppy in the in the uh, save file, and it was something I just had to fix. So I'm going to do it here too. We're going to set up the save in globals um, so that we can use it anywhere. Um, I find this to be helpful, and you don't have to keep loading things, and it, it just that's the way I do it. So. Uh, is it the best way? I don't know. You'd have to decide for yourself, but that's how I do it is put in globals. Um, we're going to add the save code to arrow selector, which is basically returning XML. So we'll, um, I'll go over it and then, uh, we're going to add the save code to the option menu. Then we'll probably test that. Uh, and then we will add the load to the pipeline. Now these steps are going to take the longest today, but, um, but we will go over it and, uh, hopefully by then you'll have a good idea of what it takes to to save and load some XML um, on your own. Guys, I want to remind you to uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and you know that ring that uh, that notification bell so you guys know when new stuff comes out. Um, for the most part, it's out on Friday. Uh, what time on Friday? Well, that's a good question. It just depends on how long it takes me to get it all uploaded and processed and everything. Um, but you know consider those please do um hitting that like button really helps to get the videos out uh you guys can see in the video view counts when there's a lot of likes there's a the, the views build up much faster um and uh, i would like to get this out to more people so far the people that have talked to me uh seem happy with what we've got here um and i'd like more people to to see it so that they can they can join our our group um yeah uh oh also consider patreon especially if this is a uh professional help to you um uh, if it's just a fun thing that you're trying out don't even worry about it but if this is helping you in any professional manner or helping you in something that you plan to sell well you know throwing a kickback to the channel would be nice um so yeah, just consider those things oh discord don't forget discord um jump over i'm there talk to me I like talking to you guys as those that do talk to me know that I respond to pretty much everything. So 
may take me a little bit of time, but I, I definitely try to respond to everything. All right, let's let's get our save file put in. Um, we won't need anything in content, so let's just close that down. Source engine, I put it at the base level for save, so let me grab that and put it in. Yours will be in the download, so make sure you pick that download up if you want this file. Um, it'll also give you something to test against your project if there's bugs and errors. Um, a couple of you guys have come to me with bugs and I've tried to help you out but it turned out the very best way for you guys to solve the error was just to pull down the newest version of the uh, provided source and uh, test it again, test your code against it so um, it's good to have sitting there um, then you can have you can see the base stuff and then uh, you can tell whether it's my fault that something's broken or whether uh, whether uh, it's your fault. <laughs> so it makes it easier. Okay, um, so we have this save file. Let's uh, quickly talk about it real fast. Um, a lot of this stuff isn't really needed. In fact, none of this is needed. I tried to remove all the garbage from it. This That was all old code. You, you don't want to put a bunch of things in your save file. That was probably hanging around for years. Um, as you said, as you saw, it was tower code. So it's it's years and years old. So um, I haven't made a tower defense game in a while, though I do want to. Okay, um, game ready, user ready, hero ID. These are all things that I use from Steam. I'm going to leave them here. Um, hero's not, hero level's not. We don't need that. Um, because eventually I might go over how to, to implement the Steam stack in here. Uh, or the Steam, I forget what they call it, the web API or something like that. Um, boy, that's all stuff I don't need. I obviously didn't go through that very well, did I? Anyway, um, we don't even need the save file. This is interesting. I do use this sometimes uh, because save files get very large. Eventually, you start editing a save file rather than... Um, remaking it but we're just going to do remaking one right now um but i'll leave this here it, it doesn't hurt anything um so remember that's going to come from steam so this is just going to zero right now uh game name we will put in that's important uh backup folder you want to create a weird character set of strings for that so uh and the reason for that is that uh you don't necessarily want your users to know what the backup folder is so um that's a minor deal. I don't even think I am creating that in this one, but that's um, another thing. And then you have your backup path. All of these things we're not actually going to deal with, but for backups, you, you want to have something that somewhere where the user doesn't know where they are, so they don't tend to delete them on accident or they don't mess with them. So if you are making backups, it's essentially you're making a save file and then copying it to somewhere else. Um, you want those to be available so that you can tell people where to get them later. Uh, and that way, if they've destroyed their save files somehow, they may have them. So that's what that is. We'll have to create this. So we might as well just do it right now. Um, so hold on. Uh, that is in globals. So let's open up globals. And then... Um, we need to create that uh, variable. What was the variable's name? Let's see, it was app data path, and then we'll create that. These are just little things that you're gonna need. Um, and I'll explain what they all are as we go. So let's just create it. I think it's a string, so let's just do it right here. Public static string. Boy, not working out, okay. So um, we have that, and then we're going to need to, in main, we got to declare what that that guy is. And I'm going to copy paste it because this is not something I ever, ever, ever write. Uh, this literally sits in all of my mains and never goes anywhere. Um, it goes right here in the constructor. And what is this? This is environment. Essentially, it's saying Windows, get the folder for the application's data. What is that? Well, 
I'm going to show you. Um, so here is this. You're going to need to be showing hidden files, but app data roaming. This will get you right here. Okay. So this is a file that Windows allows you to edit dynamically. There's a couple. You can do it in uh, your documents area folder. You can do it in somewhere else. But this and the documents area is where Windows um, suggests that you add stuff. And as you can see, you know, I have Domina in there and I have, there's a lot of different stuff in here. Um, Factorio, let's see. All I'm trying to say is lots of places use it. Tooth and Tail, Banner Saga, I'm a Rift. I played that for a little while. Reign of Argus. Just tons of these are all just stuff that uses it. Unity uses it. Um, Tropico, Twitch. Anyway, commonly used folder, right? And you can actually see some of my other games and uh, Empire Architect and Guilds of Delinar because I work on it here still. Comes out in March. Um, the other ones are in here too. Zavix Tower and Hydraulic Empire. There it is. Okay, there's all of mine. So you can see all of my games are in here. Um, I use this regularly. I'm not giving you some weird place to do it. This is where it put, but that's that's where they go. Okay, so um, that's what that does. So it's globals app data file path equals environment dot git folder path environment and then in the parentheses environment dot special folder dot applications data parentheses semicolon okay and that goes in your constructor of main um, and this file I mean you don't ever need to type this again this needs to go if you're going to use this save file it needs to go just in every game right here in the constructor of your main class okay back to it okay so what's this base folder then well, it's app. It's that path, plus the game name. So the game name here would be for me top down shooter. That's what it is that I've called it. So that's what we'll pass in here. We'll save the game name, and then that'll be there. Okay. Um, checking if file exists. Okay. Uh, usually you're gonna have something here, like some code may not usually. Often you will have some code here uh, that processes this. That's why I've saved it in, as it. This could just say return this, and it would be good for right now. But oftentimes I process this in some way. So, and that, that is game dependent. So I'll override this with a different save class oftentimes. Okay, so there's that path again here. We have the game name, then XML, saved games, you know, all this. It's checking to see if the file exists. Well, that's not the one I usually use. This is the one I usually use. We don't even need this one. This is a specific one. That's that's garbage. You don't want it. But it has the same name, so I messed up. All right, we'll go back to file exists again. <laughs> Here we go. It's just you pass in the path. It goes to there and the game name and the path that you give it. So, for instance, what we're going to be doing today, I believe, is you know game name, and then it's going to be XML, and then it's going to be... Uh, options.xml okay so that's that that one was out of order that's probably why it got through creating folders um, these are folders that I always use you can change these to be whatever you want so I need to make sure that the game name folder is created I need to know that the XML folder is created and I need to know that the save games folder is created if I create more folders within a game folder you add them into here um, in an overrided save file and then that goes here so this, every time the game is called, it's going to try to add these folders. If it can't add the folders, it does nothing. So if they're already there, it does nothing. So they just call this every time. That way you can never have a, the game break because the folder doesn't exist. Unless some crazy human decides to go deleting folders while the game's open. But, I mean, that's rare. You could call this before you add every any file ever. Um, but for the most part no need that's an edge case that really shouldn't happen if the game crashes because they're deleting files inside the game folders that's their own fault in my mind okay uh create folder so this is create folder um it takes in the name of the folder and it uses c sharps uh uh standard stuff so directory info is how you create a folder and then that's it 
then you then it's uh, testing it through again. This is just the the variable that I cited, and then asking if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then it creates it. That's it. That's all it is. No big deal. But that's how you, this is creating folders. Is these two? The checking file exists. We talked about deleting a file. Again, this is just standard C sharp procedure. Okay, file dot delete and then give it the path. Um, very standard stuff. Uh, I don't know what's in here. Whether we need it. Oh yeah, we do need that. Okay getting xml files the reason this is in a region is oftentimes i will have a few of these but this is the only one you actually need the other ones would just be uh specific so this returns an x document so this is only return getting files that are xml files okay uh, if you're trying to get something else you have your own uh format that's on you you're gonna have to process it your own way all that processing and loading goes here it's a one-liner with xml um, and i'm only gonna cover xml uh, I don't love JSON, and so uh, XML is my default, and I'm not going to go over creating uh, custom save well, it's custom data files. Uh, I don't even do it for myself at this point. I know how to do it, but I don't do it, uh, so I'm not going to go over it because I don't see a high enough value level. Maybe you hit AAA, then the value level goes up, even AA maybe the value goes up but for me right now they load so fast it's not even worth thinking about currently um but that's that's neither here nor there okay so we check if file exists remember that's just here the file if the file exists then we're going to to load it as an xml file so x document is just an xml document and then dot load and the path that's all it takes if not it returns null okay um and then you test for that if you need to somewhere else and you'll see me test for that later um, this is loading just any XML file. It's a wrapper so that I can have more out here. Um, again, I limited these down to very minor, but if you have some validity checks you want to do, this is where you would do them. So you check the validity of this XML. So if you wanted to see if somebody edited the file, you would run that code here. Um, that's why this wraps up this. Okay um handle save formats there are two of them okay uh we are not going to use this one i left it in here because this is a more uh standard um writing so these are how we write and if you have different platforms you're going to have to wrap these in uh in uh, if def code same here but this will write anything this writes xml files so since we're only using XML files, this is really all I ever use. You can use this. I don't use this, but it does work. Okay. So this is basically using ASCII encoding, and it's writing in bytes, and then you end up with the file all written in bytes. Okay. This writes XML straight. It's just obviously simpler. Okay. I'm not going to go over it past that. This writes, I mean, you can use this to save... Uh, pretty much anything if you pass in a different variable i mean obviously i'm passing in xml here but if you passed in just a string you could write the string if you passed in even an image this should write the image too if i remember right I'm, yes it will it will this will write even an image to this screen so if you wanted to save a screenshot or something that should write it as long as you can get it into the right format to put it in so saving a file same thing it just all ends up in the XML folder here. Path, very simple. Okay. And since everything I'm saving is in XML, it all goes in the XML folder. Um, okay, these are um, just fun, so I left them in. These are converting a string to binary and a binary back to a string. So if you pass in your data into here it'll process it into binary and if you uh pass in binary to process it back to a string so they're just fun so i left them in um little bits of, of stuff that i found interesting in my life you don't need them but they're there okay all right that covers uh talking about the x the that's right going over it we're here now okay the minor edits to option menu. Let's get those out of the way, and then I'll explain them, why I'm doing them. 
basically they just made my XML look ugly and I didn't like it. Um, and I don't know. Sometimes I get picky with stuff. I try not to for these tutorials, but at times I just can't uh, help it. Sorry, I was talking, didn't even, couldn't even. Okay, so basically, oh, you know what? I didn't even do them on this one. Okay, so in my prompt, I had this on all of them. Okay, and that shows up in the XML. It's two extra characters you don't need. Um, so good, they're already like that here. Uh, but in my prompt, I had those. So eh, all right, cool, they're gone. Sweet. Um, set up, save, and global. All right, back to our global file. Um, and then we will add saves to it. So, well, all right. Uh, it's more complicated than those. I tried to do like descending order of complexity, um, but that's just me. So static save save. Very simple. And then we're gonna have to go to main to uh, to put that in. So it's gonna be down in load content, and we're gonna be. You want to be right at the top, so that when you, so that you're um, ready to pull in file data right away. Um, so here we go. Globals dot save equals new save, and then game ID doesn't matter. You would fill that with your Steam's game ID um, or whatever game ID for whatever system you're pr releasing your game on, and then game name is a uh, variable that you can create and for me it's going to be top down shooter so place your game name there all right so we are now initializing all of this we are ready to use this woohoo okay um options menu oh um well no, we're gonna go do we're gonna do arrow selector first so do do do, do. it always kills me because this for me is named basic 2d and it's always under my because i because it's named basic 2d it ends up down here and <laughs> oh no it's just because it's added as a second uh, library that's why it's down there um so it's always weird to come find stuff up here uh data types forms arrow selector okay so we have our arrow selector we're not going to do a whole lot in here we're just going to add one function is all we're adding and it's gonna just be return XML. So it's public virtual X element, because we're returning an X element. Return XML. Then it's gonna be X element. Oh yeah, we're into the typing code part now. <laughs> so uh, keep up. Uh, or just download it and you know copy paste it or whatever. That's up to you if that's what you wanna do. So new x element okay so now when we're creating x elements you can enter the name of it and leave it open and then add, add more stuff or you can close it up by adding a variable and i'll show you what i mean by that so uh this xml elements name is option and this should be the name of all x elements from form things and i'll show you why later so let's say that you have a text box um, well it still uses uh, form options and form options uh, uh, they have the same format and therefore using them in all of your form parts means that you'll be able to loop in and out this save and load data if you don't do it you probably won't be able to do that unless you have some other cool format to do it with not saying this is the only way, but this is uh, a way. So our name is option, and our data piece for here is a new X element. Okay, so inside options is another element, not its own ending data, okay? Inside this one, we'll say name title. Oop, nope, nope, nope. Forgot the quote marks, name title. Um, I use name because 
it's going to make more sense later, but it's the name of the variable that we're working with, essentially. Okay, so now that's a closed element. How do we add another element into here? Well, you just add a comma and do another element. Okay, and for this one, we're going to say selected because this is the most important thing. And then selected. Selected is an int. It'll read right into it. So now we know which one is selected. You can use a different format. If you want to, you know, try to uh, use, uh, you can save all of the, the options that we add, options here, that we add in here, but I, I don't find that to be useful. The, the downfall of this way of doing it is that you will, uh, let's say you add options and you put them in different places, like you don't put them at the end of the option additions, then this will screw up what's selected. Uh, but the way to stop that would be to add in, uh, you know, select its name instead of its location. So, um, but that would take more code, but we'll, I'll show you what I mean. The X element, and then it would be uh, selected uh, sorry, quotes, selected value, or selected name, that would probably be better, and then you would put in the name, because you don't know what the value is going to be, because it's an object, so, and then you would put in uh, the options, and then selected, and then name. So then you could loop through and find the one with the name, but this causes an extra loop on um, on the loading. So I'm not. I'll leave it here for you if you want it. I'm going to use this one for the tutorial. How's that? It doesn't hurt much to add that. It doesn't add a whole lot to our XML. Okay, and then we need to return it. So boom. Okay. So that is a basic return XML block. Okay, you're going to use this all over the place. Anything you need to return XML for, for saving, this is what you use. Um, it's the only one we're going to do today, but they all work in a similar manner. Okay, let's go to our options menu. In our options menu, we are going to uh, save our game, our, our options. Uh, we're going to save our options. I'm looking at the wrong file, like a dummy. Uh, and we're going to do it right here. And then, let's see. So we need a function. We don't need. I like to have its own function. Um, and then save options. So public virtual void, save options. Let's take that guy right there. And I'm going to save on exit of the menu. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, remember I mentioned the challenge that I gave you guys last time. Uh, if you did that challenge and you are saving the state properly so that it doesn't just save automatically, you have to hit the save button to save it, put it there. Don't put it in the exit button. So that would be the difference here. Okay. Um, next. We are going to create an X document. What's the difference between an X document and an X element? X documents can save and load, X elements can't. Past that, there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, so I'm sure there's slight differences, but that's essentially the difference. And so we need a new X document. Not element, X document. There we go. And then let's close that up real fast and then we'll work inside here. So in an X document, you need to create an X element inside. So that I guess is a slight difference is the way you uh, work with it, X element. And then here we have root. I always start my XML files with root. You can do whatever you want. That's how I do things. Um, and then new X element. And then here we're going to say options and we're just going to close it. 
So no data and options, we're just creating it and leaving it be. Notice each time I created one, I closed it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a bunch of, you're not going to know how many prints, and it kind of becomes a pain in the butt to figure out how many prints. So just oh, close them as you go. At least that's my advice to you. Okay, so um, we have these options, and now we need to loop in the data from them. Our options are from arrow selectors. So for int i equals zero, i less than arrow selectors dot count i plus plus, and then x ml dot so xml this here dot add oh no 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 dot element I'm sorry xml dot element we'll get to add in a second not in this one's root so root dot element options dot add what are we adding? Well, we're adding arrow selectors i dot return xml. So we are now looping through and adding options that come from here. So what you're going to have is you're going to have, oops, you have this tag holding this tag options, which holds three option tags. So, and those option tags will hold, joy, I'm clicking the wrong stuff here. Let me get these in the order I want them. Okay, which will hold uh, these three pieces of data per thing. Okay, so this is a save. This should save our file other than we actually have to call the saving. So let's do that. Globals.save.handle save formats, and then it's gonna be XML and then path, which is just going to be options. Oops. Let's close everything out so I feel more comfortable. Options dot XML. Okay. So this will save this file if we did it right. And I'm going to delete this so you guys can see it all working because these are going to use the same um, thing. So T, 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 T top down shoot them delete this whole file so we're starting from scratch and I'm gonna hit build I want to do it with that on the screen but it's not gonna happen I'm gonna have to shrink this and then hit here okay so when I run this it should create that folder right there let's see if it works we're running it there it is top down shooter nothing in it that's good that's what we want okay now here's our, our data okay now here's our our game we are going to change each of these data to make sure it's saving properly so this is going to go to yes these are all the defaults this one will go down this one will go up so we, we when we after we load it we want yes 13 18 right that's what we're looking for I'm gonna hit exit and you're gonna see so there's still nothing in here I'm gonna hit exit there it is. Okay, so here's our, our options uh, file. Give it a second, it'll come up. And okay, so we have the three options. This is our full screen option. The selected option is one, and the name of it is yes. Here's our music volume option, selected is 13 and the name of it is 13, 18 and 18, same thing, okay? So we have this saved file, we have saved a file. Awesome, okay? We are really getting somewhere now, okay? Let's close this up. We have our data, expand this back, and let's create a load file. Now, um, loading is so this is harder to think about, the way this is structured to where everything passes everything back almost recursively. Um, you only have two levels, so it's hard to see that it's recursive, but if arrow selector had stuff, it'd be passing it back, and then the next thing, and the next thing, it's kind of recursive. Um, it's not actually recursive, but it kind of goes out to the furthest extent and then comes back like recursion does. Um, if you don't know what recursion is, look it up. Recursion. It's a very powerful tool. We haven't covered anything that needs it yet, but um, it's very helpful at times. Okay, 
So uh, we need to load the data we have. So um, we're going to start that file as public virtual void load data. And in load data, we are going to say XML document. Now, this is usually X document. This is usually an X element. But because we're going to take in the whole document, because it's an options file, it is going to use the document this time. We are going to load that file at the end of options. OK, so um, let's load that file now. So to do that, we want x document uh, XML equals. The reason I'm doing it out here is so that I can have the same structure that I want you guys to use, which is to pass in the data to load data. So you already have to have the data. You could put what I'm putting here in your load data, but it just would be a completely different structure than the what you're going to use for everything else. So I recommend doing it this way. Globals dot save dot get file and then we have this string and it's just XML uh, options dot XML so that should pull in our, our all of our file into there and then we are gonna say load data XML we are gonna come down here we're gonna test for null remember I told you we would test for null so if data oops not equal, she's not equal null. Uh, I recommend you always test for null on your data. Um, it'll save you a lot of crashes while you're doing your own stuff. So um, that's just a recommendation. You don't have to do it. I would say you should know that data is coming in properly. But if it's not, at least you're testing for it. Okay. So now we're looking at. Uh, doing our load uh, stuffs. So we're going to have a little bit more complicated query here. And I say query, uh, our queries that we've done in the past on our link data is, uh, I believe it's in um, world, if I remember right. World. Down in load data. Do, 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 do. There's one good enough for me I don't care which one I just want anyone and uh, here we are going I'm gonna do this out of order so that you can understand why I'm doing what I'm doing okay so bear with me here this is out of order we are gonna be adding more code in front of this in a second but let's worry about the query first so this is gonna be option list option list okay and then here we are going to be root options Remember, I always use root so that's already there that's good now this is not XML it's data and then the descendants is option okay now we're gonna have our most complicated query you ready where T which is an individual entry in here dot element uh, value and then which element we'll talk about in a second and then uh, here we're gonna put in any one of these strings will do but we're just gonna start with full screen for now okay um, and then what is the, the, the piece that gives us this piece of data well if you look here name so we come in here we say name okay so we are saying get me the piece of data give me all pieces of data but in this case we know it's only one get me all pieces of data that are within the root options uh, tags and they are named option where the element name value is equal to full screen so I'm asking, hey, go get me the value from course full screen. That's what I'm telling it to do, okay? Um, if you don't understand this, this is pretty common for the way that you do queries on databases, okay? That's why link is so powerful. 
is that it allows you to treat XML like a standard database, a standard uh, MySQL or a standard uh, Oracle or a standard, uh, I forget what the what Microsoft's one is called. Um, I've used them, but I don't remember the names. Um, so they all query very similarly like this. In fact, pretty much exactly, okay? Now we know there's only one item, but it could be a list of all items. Like I could just say where name is not, e not equal to blank. Right, that would get everything. We don't want that. We want one right here. And so, since we know it's just one, what we're gonna do, shoot. So we're just gonna ask if it's greater than zero. Option list dot count greater than zero, greater than zero. Okay, um, and then inside here, we're gonna say four, and remember I told you we're gonna add stuff outside, so we're gonna say int j equals zero. Okay, because I'm adding a loop out here later. Okay, so j equals zero, j less than arrow selectors, shoot, dot count, j plus plus. Let's close it up. And in here, we're going to say if arrow selectors i, or j, I'm sorry, j j arrow selectors j dot title equals all options no not all options <laughs> that's what we're gonna do later <laughs> don't don't so it's full screen um so this matches this okay then we're gonna say arrow selectors i uh, j j dot selected I got I so stuck in my head because it's almost always I okay convert because we're gonna have to convert this is a string that's coming in through here because everything in XML is string so we've got to convert it to int 32 and we got to make sure we use our globals dot culture okay and then in here we're gonna have options list zero because we know it's just one thing and just it's just how it goes and I don't want to make a third loop element element and then here we'll do it in a second dot value okay and then in here which one is this well this is selected so selected Okay, so we're setting the selected value to the selected value. Well, that will give you the correct option. Okay, let's test this. This should load full screen as yes. Do, 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 do. Oh, if we don't break everything. This is lowercase in, it's not gonna let me, because it's inside link, it won't let you just edit it. Lowercase n, my bad. Try that again. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Full screen loads in is yes. These we didn't do, so I don't, I'm not expecting them to work, but full screen loaded in yes. So this time I'm gonna say no and exit. Let's check our, our stuff. Those changed. Good, that's what we expect, making sure. And next time it should load in no. Okay, but what did we learn? Well, we learned that if we know the title of our form object, in this case, they're arrow selectors, then we can, uh, we can loop through and find where to load the data in because we matched all of the data parts. So we're, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's find out what is all of our data. All of our data it can be stored in list because these are strings. We're gonna store it in list strings, L-I-S-T, string, um, all options, and that's the thing I mentioned earlier because I was reading instead of thinking. New uh, list string done. Okay, okay, so now what do we want in here? Well, we want the titles of all of our uh, form options, which are all arrow selectors. So for and i equals zero, i less than arrow selectors dot count, i. I plus plus and then we want to say all options dot add 
arrow selector i, not j, um, dot title. Okay, so that these are titles. This is a title. We are now adding them all into a loop. So now we have the names of we have the titles of all of our form options currently. If you have different kinds of form options and you haven't created a form control, then you're going to need to um, create a loop for each set of form options. Okay. Now that we have all that data, we can loop for all of them. So remember, in this one, we hard coded just full screen. And here, what we're going to do is uh, unhard code that. So int i equals zero, i less than all options dot count i plus plus, and then all options replace uh, all options i replaces this. So I hate that it auto corrects that because I like it to look like this. Okay, so that and then it replaces it here also. So don't forget to do that. Now we have a loop that if arranged properly loads in all form options again in this case we only have arrow selectors eventually we'll probably create a form control we will create a base class that arrow, sele arrow selector um, inherits from and then the form control will, will have a list of those things so on and so forth and then you will be able to list all of them in okay and this is your tiny little load data. My first load data was like 200 and some odd lines long. And what would we do this in? 28 lines. So this is the difference between um, pretty good code. I'm not going to say this is perfect. Some pretty good code and some terrible code is like hundreds of lines of hard coding. This is a way to loop it. Now, what would stop you from figuring this out? Well, figuring out that you need to you know, use titles to and line them up and, and making sure that you understand how link can get their proper data for you. All of these things go into making better code. So I am giving you a quite good piece of code here um, because I want you to have it. And I want you to understand how you want to save your data. If you save your data in such a way that it is easy to loop back in from when you're loading it, then you're going to save yourself a lot of time and headaches. So that's what we set up, set up here, and that's what we've done. So let's make sure it works. So we're expecting no, and then I think it's 1318. Is that correct? Let's look. We're expecting no, oh, because I left those at 15. It saved them. Let's just change them. Let's pretend. Let's pretend. Let's pretend. OK, so now we're looking for no 1318. We know our save works, so we only have to test the load part. All right, moment of truth. No, 1318. Let's change them up again just for fun. Exit, close. Load them. Options. Yes, 19.8. All right, guys. Um, this should get you quite far into your... Um, uh, the study of saving and loading things, okay? Um, I really hope this helps. I know you guys have been asking for it. I've been trying to get to it, but I wanted to do it on a tutorial uh, that I was handing everything out because to me, this is kind of a big one. Um, Time-wise, it's not nearly as big as the last one, but it's it's uh, ultra important. Obviously, if you're not saving stuff, then you don't have much more than an arcade game. So, and I have nothing against arcade games. I like arcade games, but you got to be able to save something. So this should get you well on your way to saving and loading properly. Guys, if you haven't hit the like button and you made it this far, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet and I've been helpful to you, please subscribe because you never know what I'm going to put out that might be helpful to you as, as well. I've had people contact me saying, I've been doing program for 15 years and what you're doing is a breath of fresh air, stuff like that. So look, you never know when something is going to be helpful to you. Even if every tutorial I don't put that I put out isn't helpful to you, it doesn't mean that none of them will be. So um, yeah, just hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell so that you see that the, uh, the uh, videos come out. Um, and then, uh, you know, guys, uh, I'll see you guys next time. I'm really happy that we've gotten this far. far. We've, we've gotten to 40 videos. That's awesome we're at 267 subscribers that is 
well beyond where I ever thought we'd reach. Um, I'm so proud to be a part of you guys' journeys, and uh, I hope you guys are, uh, are happy to continue along with me. Okay? All right. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, enjoy saving and loading your games. Oh, 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 challenge. Your challenge would be to save your game. Whatever game you're making, you need to save the relevant parts of it. So for us, well, let's go through. For us, that would be, you need to only have level one showing. And after you've beat level one, you save that you've beat level one. And then level two will show. Okay. And we will go over that at some point. Um, probably in the next few tutorials, actually. I'm not 100% sure, but we will definitely go over it at some point. And, but that would be the challenge for you guys here. If you guys can manage that, then you have a great concept of saving and loading going for you guys, okay? If you have something different in your game, if you have it set up in a different way, uh, and it's not meant to play the way our game is, then find something that's relevant to save and save it, and then load it, okay? All right, guys, I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for, for being a part of this. Have a good one.